Howdy y'all, King Louie here, and welcome to another episode of Choice of the Pirate with one key difference this time. This time, we have music! One thing I didn't much like about this game was that it's just completely silent, you know? All it is are the words, and you, and the ship, and your imagination, yada yada yada. This time, we have dramatic trumpets, the charismatic strum of the guitar, the joy of a kazoo. Not that last part, but we'll get there. And I believe that will make this whole thing a whole lot more fun. But that's not what you're here for. You're here for me to play this amazing game. So let's return right on to it with Chapter 2, San Alfonso. Chapter 2, San Alfonso, like I said. San Alfonso. If the crown were to be believed, San Alfonso would be the cesspool into which all the villains and ruffians of the high seas drain. And while they'd be right about the company, San Alfonso is nothing like a cesspool. It's not. It's more like a home. It's a bit more akin to the tropical paradises you hear about in the romances, or the even older tales of the beautiful island of Calypso. In atmosphere, it lacks nothing. Natural spring water runs free, runs freely. The trees provide papayas and mangoes plenty, and the natural harbor guards against the worst weather. And the crown's naval patrols, which is also nice. The port town itself is a vibrant place where locals mingle casually with sailors from the sunny shores, where music cascades down the streets, and where the rum flows in abundance. In a very important place. But it's also a clean little town. Anyways. And though the law itself is quite relaxed, there's an unspoken truce among the pirates, and understanding that those who take advantage of the hospitality of San Alfonso in a way that harms her people will find themselves barred from the island. Good, good riddance. Let's get them out of here. Let's get them out of here. You gonna call shovel up? Yeah, get out of here. How this should come to pass, you're not sure. But there must be a reason that the leader of this poor island is known as El Sebio, the wise. What part of San Alfonso do you enjoy visiting most on your trip support? Okay, look. Roleplay is important in games like this and all, but this sounds like an amazing place. I'm gonna pick what I want. All right, the school of magic sounds amazing. The Library of Alexander, even better. The Bazaar, or the Black Wolf Tavern. Hmm. Tavern? You got taverns everywhere. You got bars everywhere. You can go to New Orleans for a good old-fashioned bar. The Bazaar? It's a good market, I guess. But, you know, we got we got malls, I guess. That's not really the same, though. But, more importantly, Library of Alexandra, or Library of Alexander. You know, yeah, no, it was there. You have no clue. I, I'm going to pick that. I'm going to pick that. There's so much cool stuff. Library, okay. Real quick, I didn't show you this in the last one. I probably should have, but I can show stats. Now, every choice you make, your stats improve. I don't know which that one improved. I don't know if it improved my skullduggery or my parlay or sailing or whatever it improved. But I know it was fun. In fact, let's return to game. And libraries are few and far between in the Lucaea, but the Library of Alexander makes up for how spare written materials are in their life at sea. And you start carrying with it. Put them on your boat, I'm sure that's safe. Open to the public, even those who aren't residents. The collection contains not only romances and other entertaining tales, but also full shells on mathematics and navigation, astronomy and the sciences, and treatises on law and philosophy. It's a veritable treasure trove for knowledge seekers, and you admit you've learned a thing or two about tactics from the classic works of strategy you can count while browsing. Also, the librarian plays a mean game of chess. She's ruthless. I bet. Which book would y'all like? It's like, if I went to this library, I would probably get the, uh, amongst all those, yeah, romances and entertaining tales. I like the fiction. I like the Tolkien. A bit more, I like the law and the astronomy and the navigation. But I could get bored with that. But I give me a good old romance or a good old entertaining tale. I'm sitting. I'm done. I'm, I'm going to be there for hours. Next. Wow. That's a lot of things. But tonight, it looks like Captain Blackguard has found a soft spot in his heart. And is leading you and the rest of your bed raggle crewmates to the Lobo Negro. The Lobo Negro is exactly the kind of place the Crown would have its citizens believe represents San Alfonso entirely. A low end, low class establishment, home for bras. Alright, drunkenness. Alright, grass humor. Alright! Where the rest of San Alfonso is almost eerily civilized, considering its population of scoundrels and sea dogs, the Lobo Negro is a wreck, is a rock. Uh, a riousous house of rum and music, dancing on the buck. It was the first stop on nearly every sailor's list upon return to port, especially sailors who are half drowned. 
but their good nature brawls are commonplace. Pirate captains never sell their grievances in Boba Fett. Good for them. Good for them. What gentlemen. What what fine, upstanding citizens. Where was I? Like in the rest of Sin Alfonso, the truce applies here, no matter how much one captain may hate another. So when Captain Briar and her crew show up in much the same state as you and your crewmates, moments after your arrival, you all avoid each other entirely. No sense rubbing songs to the wounds you're all doing. Oh, what the we beat we beat them. What what wounds do we got? We got the wounds of victory, maybe? Oh, no, wait, no, we didn't beat him. I think they, they sunk our ship. <laughs> okay, oops. But Captain Blackguard sails in at a large table and for the moment seems to have forgotten about you, giving you a short time to indulge your curiosity among, about, about the other patrons of the Lobo Neck. You've met friends and enemies and lovers under this roof, sometimes all three at once. After a friend like today, you'd be glad of some congenial companionship. What sort of lovers do you normally seek? I personally prefer women, so so does my character. Next. There are frequently women at the Lobo Negro that meet your taste and you've tumbled with a few of the tonight. There's one who's caught your eye at a number of times and said you've not yet had the chance to encounter more than thorough. And Reed, a wealthy pirate captain who's not giving you a second glance. I'm not saying I'm a gold digger, but it seems my character is. She's everything the romances make a pirate out to be and arrogant to boot. She boasts she'll one day be the next pirate king, and the way she holds court at the Lobo Negro, it's as if she's already assumed her type. Good on her. Reed would never let her gender stop her from being, becoming a king or anything else she believes to be. And the king is a king, regardless of who holds her robot. I'm not stopping her. Based on the whole description, I mean, she'd probably wipe the floor with me. She might not be worth the trouble she'd undoubtedly come with, but there's no denying that she's attractive. She's got the strength and power in the back of her brag. You notice a newcomer among her audience, and only Paul's give him a second glance because of the way he's watching her. He's pretty, or a sailor, and as strong as you'd expect. But he glances at everyone in the crowd with a calculating glaze that makes her gaze and makes you uneasy. Well, guess it's time for old Detective Louie to crack the case, huh? What is he up to? He's glancing at everybody. We're gonna put a pin in. Find out. There's another new Marino, so for different reasons. A young Cambiante, Islander by her, if I'm not mistaken. We see it at a table by herself, which means she's made an impression on something. No one sits alone at the local they go unless they inspire respect or fear. So the Cambiante must have done something to stick with her. Despite the honor, she doesn't look pleased or solitary. You could take the risk of buying her a drink to see if her friend is perpetual. Or she lined up on the promise of a bit of fun. Then a ra raucous burst of laughter draws your attention to another table, where John Gunn, a drunk old sea dog, is once again rec recounting his adventures to a group of young sailors, with such exaggeration that no bait in the world could get this drink. Interesting. Who would you like to approach? Hmm. Into the bar with Caesar. Old Caesar. Good guy, good guy, good friend. I go to Ann Reed's table, the future king. So up to a newcomer, Detective Louis on the case, Cambiante, or I go listen to John Gunn. It's the future king. I gotta make I gotta make inroads here. I gotta build connections. Who knows? I could be the squire or something. I don't know. That'd be something. In the court. In the court. And is in the middle of telling a pirate joke when you arrive. Ha ha ha. It's one you've heard before. Every time the captain faces a crown ship, he calls her cabin boy to bring him his red shirt. Oh, I love this joke. Why? Aaron asks in his cabin boy voice. Do you always ask for your red shirt before a battle? Anne drops her voice and it emphasizes the scratchiness of her own voice to read the image of cabin. Well, lad, if I were to be cut in battle and the crew would see the blood through my shirt, they'd just see their captain fight and they'd fight all the harder. You know the punchline of the joke. What do you do? She's a king! So am I. I gotta have a little bit of thunder of my, of my own. So, I'm a... Nah, nah, that ain't right. Nah, I didn't read, <laughs> I didn't read the choices. I'm gonna take on the voice of the lookout to enhance the joke. It's always better to enhance the joke than steal the fun. Why, why go against when you can work together? Next. After a nice celebration on the last victory, the crew is a bit groggy in the next morning. And tells her audience conspiracy. 
They chuckle and lift their drinks in appreciation. But that morning, the lookout cries, Captain! You break in drunkenly, swaying where you stand. It's the entire Crown Navy! The crowd chuckles, but Anne Reed's face is going blank. And all of you wait to see how she'll respond. Oops. She looks straight at you and says, Fetch me my brown pants! And you think you see her wink at you before he looks away. The right choice. The right choice. The crowd roars in appreciation and the newcomer nearly spits his drink at the punchline. Which, more than anything, tell you he'd not been to the Lobo Negro before. You slap him on his back. Gracias, he says. No hay de que, you answer offhand, telling him think nothing of it. You give him your hand. Bartolome de Ma. Jo Joaquin de Aviles, he answers back, shaking. He gives you a smile that seems more genuine than calculated. That'd meet a friendly face. Or at least a friendly back pattern, you say. He chokes. What brings you to San Alfonso? Work, he says. I'm looking for it. Next. Wow, there's a lot of text in this game, eh? But before you can converse further, John Gunn launches himself up from his table, tipping half the drinks. Tis the sure and honest truth, he roars. Now I have, I have the map on me and I'll prove it. I'll bring the treasure back and no one will laugh at John Gunn again. I might. Now he stumbles out of the tavern uh, and into the night. His departure is lar largely greeted with laughter, but Blackguard isn't laughing. The captain stands, beckons to you and sees the Lord, and heads outside. You know, without a doubt, he's going after gun treasure. I excuse myself and follow. He is my captain. Or is it treasure? Great. I invite Anne. I mean, she's a king, but uh, come on. That's like splitting it four ways. Ask your captain if he wants to tag along. I look to see what Caesar's going to do. I wait. Uh... Nah, he's my captain. It's the honorable thing to do. I don't much like the guy, but the duty's duty. I follow him. Like our faces in the moonlight, the swaying of step evident. Evidence that he's more accustomed to walking shipboard than on land. Lord, he says, and also big man in Jersey, Del Mar. So apparently he took the time to collect your name. Oh, oh consider it. You had my back when it matters, he says to you. There's no one I'd rather trust to have on this expedition than you. Or I'm well, and I'll make it worth your own while. Consider asking if he'll let you insist on your contracts, but that might not be the best way to respond to his gratitude. Alright. Black gear gestures at the retreating form of John Gunn, that drunk old dog with the supposed treasure map. Gunn says he's got a map to the treasure of Captain Avery Flint. The Flint? Wow. It's not the legend of Ishmael the Lost, but since we find ourselves in need of coin, we can't afford to miss this opportunity. We'll be the ones to get the treasure, and if you do your part, we'll split the shares equally. Let it not be said I'm a stingy captain. I might have said that a few times. You and Caesar do your best not to look at each other, because one of the two of you would be unable to keep a straight face. That's it. If the legends speak true, Flint left more than enough to buy a new ship, Blackguard thinks. And I'll be damned if I say landlocked longer needs to be. As Blackguard expounds on that idea with curses, Caesar leads down Bush Street. If he left more than enough to buy a new ship, he says quietly. By tomorrow, you could be Captain Belmar. He is your first mate. Your own ship. Your own captain, sir. It's an opportunity you've been after for years. And all you need is Caesar is the way out of those pesky non trash of black girl. The captain winds down his ground with the terror being stranded ashore, and you and Caesar both not dutifully and absent. Black guard turns to you. Belmar, I think it's time for you to share some initiative with leadership. You know the code words for a captain when it's there to test when you're here. How should we go about this? We can team up with Gun, we can intimidate Gun to join us, we can steal Gun's map. Let's. Huh. I mean, intimidation is cool and all, but he might just lead us on a wild goose chase. And he doesn't seem like the type to be intimidated. We could steal it, but yeah, how would he do that? Let's just. Let's follow Gun to a treasure and take, take it from him. We could use that. Your party of treasure hunters follows behind the old man as he meanders through the port city and up into the hills above San Alfonso. It's a warm night and we walk from San Alfonso to the wild, so it'll be pleasant for a moment. That's that sort of skylag. Like on many of the islands in the Lucayum, the interior of the island is hilly and covered with rain. The islanders may have had ways to navigate the course, but there are mystery horse sailors, and the islanders build their villages on the shores rather than the course. Though the ground is clear of low growth earth and burns, the canopy above blocks up the night, making the night even 
you've heard, the rain force is haunted. Oh, okay. Let's for that knowledge now. Those stories are mostly told by drunk old dogs like Gun. Oh, the sounds of movement above you and the occasional flurry of bats just over there. You can understand why people are suspicious of these trees. Gun stays ahead of you, though he looks back frequently, and you're sure you're not all that stubborn. The bike guard is as awkward as the force as the brothers first voyage. He seems not to notice you. He definitely knows you. So you follow him upward through the mahogany and pop trees, listen to the howlers and further views of the parking trees. He wants you to scream of a cat or a cody, and though you know that no large predators live on the island, you find yourself keeping an extra sharp watch around you, which helps you to spot gun around you, a pair of boars and a on sight. Behind, behind the boars, you watch his gun begin to dig. As you hear Black Guard breathing next to you, you realize this is a moment of return. You're far enough out of Al San Alfonso that the tactic rules don't apply. If some nice one were to have a Black Guard, it would be the boss. Huh. I could knock Blackguard out and take a share. He says that Blackguard intimidate, try to buy him. I ain't gonna buy him off, I ain't gonna intimidate him. I, I could try to shoot them and shoot Blackguard instead. Oh, man. Look, look, I'm still getting I'm still getting a share of the treasure. I don't need that much. As far as Gump once said, after a certain after you get a certain level of richness, this is not exactly uh, you're just showing off. So I think Look, I'm just going to follow his orders. I'm getting a pretty good share, and I get an ally out of it, so next. He's still your captain, no matter how unhappy with him you are. But as bad as a pirate as you think he is, he's picked up on your ambitions. I've heard you say you aim to own your own ship, is this conversation. Blackguard puts a hand on your shoulder. I owe you for saving me life in the Catlant, he says. I release you from your contract and send you off with me, blessing. So you'll keep your share of the treasure after all. And be Caesar Rumbles, want to go with him? Blackguard stretches his chin. I could part with your services for 100 balloons. Caesar makes a show of concern, but you know it'll take it. So it's settled, or is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm glad to have him on good terms. So, you know, whatever. I get an ally, I get Caesar on my side, and I get all the money I want. What's the problem? What's the problem? Next. He may be an awful pirate, but he's a well known one. He could be a useful ally in the future. And I'll remain inside and I'll deal with you. <laughs> I'm just going. I'm just going to shoot him. Like I have no loyalty to this guy. I don't even know him. He's just here. If he knew that we were following, he should let us do the trick. Like, that's all. I should. Gun doesn't know you're there. How does he not know we're there? And so he, sh those the shot takes him by surprise. He falls backward, clutching the map to his chest, and his blood pools around into the ferns that cover the rainforest floor. It doesn't take long. We made him dig up the treasure too. Well, it doesn't take as long to hold up the chest from the hole he dug. The chest has a satisfying heft to it, and you're well pleased with the this way. Once you've hauled up the treasure, use Caesar and Blackguard to visit it out. There are nearly 2,000 doubloons in a small fortune for a single night's work. You're surprised when Blackguard offers you offers to buy you around at the Bobo Neck, but you won't turn them down. What do you do with your share, you ask Caesar? He shrugs, I thought I'd put it aside. I'm not done with life at sea. Yeah, I have no desire for a ship of my own, and there's a place for me on yours. You offer your hand. Glad to have you aboard, you say. You make your way to San Alfonso immensely richer, for the exhaustion sets in your bed. Too tired to dally, and tomorrow you'll have to see about a ship. And that is chapter two. What an amazing ride there. We killed some old guy, we got some treasure, and tomorrow we will try to get a ship. Or not tomorrow, next episode, blah, 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 you know what. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Had a blast filming with y'all. Hope y'all had an amazing time too. And I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Goodbye.